friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. It is 55 degrees in my garage right now at this moment. It is late, so nighttime is even colder than the day. Um, but anyways, if you're new to my channel, head down that way, that way somewhere, and subscribe, ring the bell, get notifications when I'm live, as well as like my videos. And I can my hands because it's cold <laughs> and share my videos. <laughs> So tonight's video, I know it's late. It's not, an, an, I mean, obviously any time is a normal time for me, but it's late because I took a nap earlier and I didn't want to do anything. I really didn't. I got up from my nap and I was like, I didn't want to do anything. So, but then I was like, ah, just do it. Just get it done. Start it. Do this. So I prepared the back fabric and um, got everything ironed and I'm loaded on the long arm I'm going to be quilting the one of the customer's um, quilts. It's uh, so it's a random clothing quilt. And I want you guys to see on the long arm how it goes through all this fabric because there are now the backing layer, the batting, and she chose to have thick, puffy batting as well as um, the the fabric and the interfacing. So in some areas like the, the border fabric and the accent fabrics, there is no interfacing. So it's gonna go from thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin as I run the needle over everything. So um, in some areas, if it hits a corner just right, like at a seam, and I'll turn the camera around and show you in a second. In some areas, sometimes this happens when I'm long arm quilting through really thick seams, over those areas, if I have to run it over where um, four seams come together, it it will skip a stitch. It, it does it quite often, especially if it goes from a thick area to a thin area. So I definitely want to make sure that you guys can see that as well as I'm not quilting anything fancy. One quilt is getting loop-to-loops and one quilt is getting a meander. I actually haven't even made the decision on which is which. I might as well just loop-to-loop -loop this one. Um, I like I call them loop de loops, but they're probably called lassos, I guess. I don't know. It's just it circles opposite ways. You'll see um, anywhere that there is a piece um, that has any kind of embroidery, I won't quilt on it. And I'll show you in a second again, as well as the vinyl. I am not quilting on the vinyl areas. I will go around it, but I will not quilt over the vinyl. That is only because I don't want to change my needle out just to quilt on the vinyl area, if that makes any sense. Like you can quilt over vinyl anytime, but you need to change the needle out on the long arm to a different needle. Um, so, and I don't want to do that. I'm just going to quilt around it, which will be just fine. I'm not going to highlight it by, you know, that these random clothing quilts have a four, two, two areas have the vinyl with 43 on it from being like a football shirt or whatever. And yeah, uh, I'm not going to like outline it or anything because I don't think I need to do that. I'm just going to quilt around it. So I'll go through the center of it and up into the whatever and come out and just keep quilting around it. But I won't quilt over it. At least I will try not to as best as possible. And then in one of the areas, which is down at the bottom on this one, I think I loaded the right hand side bottom corner that has the 43 the littler square that one um, I'm going to leave at least a five inch square area no quilting at all not even through the numbers reason for that is because on the back of the quilt after the fact I will be sewing on a tag through the front uh, I'm going to have it to where it comes through the front so it'll show the stitching from the front side but I will be um making sure that it lands around that 43 purposely. So, um, yeah, I'm like shivering my butt off in here. Let's see who's here before I show you guys all the things I was just talking about. We got Judy, Tiffany, and everyone that is here joining tonight. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Diane. You look cold. Yes, I am. I've got my beanie. I got my robe, my long sleeve shirts. I got my minion um, puff pants on. I'm wearing fluffy socks and my indoor outdoor fluffy slippers because... <laughs> They're like the ankle high fluffy slippers because it is cold. Uh, hi, Joyce. Good morning, everyone. Hope all is well. Everyone's saying hi. Hi, Maggie. 
So I kind of figured there wasn't going to be a lot of you joining tonight, but that's what the replay is for. Um, for those of you that will watch this afterwards, finishing the series, and then obviously this will go into the um, playlists that goes with the series of this video. So let me turn the camera around. I don't have a lot of light on because if I turn it all on now, I'm going to have to turn it all back off for you guys to even watch the quilting. I could tell you right now for those that are joining or those that don't know or are watching my videos for the first time, I am long arm quilting on a King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition machine. It is on a 12 foot frame and it's an 18 inch machine. Um, technically, I only have 15, 16 ish inches of total, total quiltable space, um, which doesn't bother me none. I still figure out a way to quilt, but um, yeah, it's, it's a nice machine. It's kind of comparable to Handy Quilter. Um, it's not comparable. It is the same thing almost. Um, as well as I am using Glide Thread uh, Color is Cool Gray um, because the back of this quilt is a cool gray. So I'm using a pretty much matching thread. And then the next quilt will have a uh, linen color thread um, from Glide because the back of that one matches linen color thread. So I'm just matching it with the back of the front. It's not really going to matter because it's not heavy quilting. So it's just going to run through this nicely. So here we go. I'm going to turn the camera around and then back up so that you can see you guys know what quilt I'm working on. So I'm working on this. This is the customer's make it from random clothing you can see down here at the bottom right there that's that other 43 block the smaller one that's the one I'm talking about where when I go to quilt it when we get to when I get to that part I probably won't do it on camera I'm going to be leaving all this area around it completely open no quilting at all so that there's a nice big square around it purposely so that I can attach the tag will land right about there and it's a um whatever tag but anywhere that there is this stuff right here I will be going around it so I won't even go onto it as well as I told you guys I put the in loving memory of for the person that um, that's the name of their daddy and their, his birth year and death year um, is on it but when I talk about thick seams we're going to come over here so right here this is a thin fabric this is double layered this is a thinner poly, but it still has the, um, the interfacing underneath it. And then this is a thicker cotton. So all these coming together has quite a difference in the seam. And you can see it's thick. It's a pretty thick seam. So when I go, if, if it crosses over this seam right here, any time throughout this whole entire quilt and it matches with the seams, what's going to happen is it's going to be very thick and it might skip a stitch. Another example is right here where the um, thermal fabric is next to a regular cotton next to another cotton and it looks wrinkled that's just because mm -hmm. I ironed um, I ironed the whole entire thing before doing it so it uh, kind of I have no idea what's going on with my phone it kind of loosens the interfacing but since the interfacing is woven and it's also into the seams it's pretty much like sewn so that stuff will fade away after its first wash um, Again, another example here, thick seams right here, especially right here. There's a lot of interfacing coming together in this area right here. So these are thinner seams, so it'll quilt really nicely because these do not have interfacing underneath them. So it should go over it pretty nicely. And it's gonna be the same on a domestic machine if you quilt this on a domestic machine. So um, yeah, where was I? I got to turn this on because let me turn this around so you guys could see me for two seconds. I was setting up this so I can watch it because I'm not going to pay attention to this once it's on the long arm. So I'm going to put you guys on the long arm in the hooky holder my bobber thing. I do have to turn the camera all the way around. So let's do that now. All right. That way it's on this side and I'm going to load you guys into here and turn the camera facing the quilt. All right, so now you should be able to see the quilt right there, just like that. So that way we can long arm it. Let me get my little piece of um, holder so that it stays against it really nicely. There we go. And now you guys could follow me with the quilting. Um, 
Anybody else join? No. Uh, Maggie came in. All right. So let's get to some stitching. I, I think this one I'm just going to go ahead and do the loopy loops like I said. And I'm hoping that you can see everything. The, the thread kind of blends in, but you can kind of see it in the basting stitches. So you should be able to see it. All right. So let's do some stitching. Hi, Lisa. All right on me so it doesn't fall open while I'm trying to do this because it is cold out here. Again, it's only 55 in the garage right now and I don't like anything under 70. So here we go. We're just going to... Oops. I just realized that I'm kind of tight on that end. There we go. I was bumping the the back of the frame right here, but obviously with the top part of my machine where you can see my hand up here, it was bumping the frame. All right, so I'm just gonna loop to loop. So I just make a circle, and I'm doing big ones. Just like this. I'm trying to stay consistent. Stitching at 10 stitches per inch. This goes pretty fast. And I kind of just do it in rows. Up and down, side to side, you know. You can hear it going through all these layers. Seriously, it slows down. And so I want you to see this. I'm hoping that it shows up on camera. Let's keep that down. Do you see this echo mark right here? I see it very, very distinctly, but there is an echo mark right here because I don't have a spoon foot for this machine, which is a foot that is like a little cup type thing that goes under here. I don't have one. It's like a spoon foot or an echo foot or anything like that. I don't have the money to buy any extra feet for this thing, but, and it's rare that I actually do stuff like this, but there is a line and it's, going to go over some of these fabrics. You can see it kind of highlighted. See that? It's going to go over some of these fabrics. It'll wipe away, but that's just the bottom of my foot rubbing against. Every time it goes down, it rubs against these thicker pieces of fabric. So I just have to watch out for that. Making sure that it runs Okay, so let's see if I can get further away real quick. I'm going to stop right here. It skipped a stitch right up here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it skipped a stitch because it went to... The, the layers are so thick right there, and then it jumped from a, um, a thermal fabric to a polyester windbreaker fabric right here. So it definitely, definitely struggles, and you can see even right here. It made it hard for me to get a perfect circle because it's so thick right there, you know, that it, it jumped. So I'm just got to make sure I have to watch for that kind of stuff.
And see, now it doesn't want to go over. So we're going to try to take that up. I know it looks kind of weird, but it'll blend in. I have to watch all that. Back onto a really thick fabric, mixed with a really thin fabric. Yep. You can hear it struggling. It look as best as possible. I definitely need that other foot for the future. <laughs> is now done and I'm going to go show you those places where it hit really hard so one area being right here can you see that it hit really hard it is so thick it wanted to just keep me off of this fabric right here and pushed me this foot didn't allow me to go beyond it so it has a little boo-boo right there but again I'm not going to pick it out because this is on a um, polyester right here and it'll leave those marks that will never go away even after washing. Once it's quilted it's staying quilted. And then again another problem you can see right here just look you see how it pulls the quilt. It yanks on that. And then again the other area was right here it wouldn't let me pass beyond this white seam right there so you could see look at that. Can you see? It doesn't allow it to go beyond that. So seems like that. See, there's no going over it. So I have to just make do with what I can. 
So unfortunately, some of these little bump areas, it's going to get stuck because it's so thick. But it, the tension should be wonderful on the bottom. I'm going to check it real quick before I advance. And then I'll advance and quilt some more. So I'm going to try to quilt it as much as I can in one video. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It looks wonderful underneath. The stitching looks great. Even in those problem areas, it didn't mess up. Okay. That's all I'm worried about is making sure that the tension is stays correct between the top and the bottom because of all the thing, all the thick seams. So let's advance this. And I'm gonna go a little bit where it's below it so that I can match up empty areas. Put my hooks back on the end, which you can't see any of that stuff because I'm totally out of camera. I'm gonna adjust, <clears throat> adjust everything as I go. Unfortunately, you can't see all that stuff again because I'm off camera, but that's okay. This one's kind of tight. Let's loosen that a little. Um, Hi, June. I'll say hi as, as I see you guys come in. So, see, it's so thick. It doesn't want me to even cross. I can lift it with my hand like this to cross to the other side very carefully. Oh, that hurts to do, but if that's the only way to cross the quilt, then so be it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm pulling everything nice and flat and flush real quick before I baste. I'm going to baste this side real quick. And we're going to change my base to half inch. Oops, what am I doing? Let's just go down as I accidentally started stitching on it. <laughs> what happens when it's cold, I don't think. away. I'm also going to pull these threads out real quick while I'm right here because I moved it away from the edge. All right, there we go. All snipped off. Now let's cross back to the other side. Probably going to hit all these seams along the way. Ooh, it doesn't even want to cross over. See, that's why I can't do the vinyl because it won't even cross that. We're going to come over to this side and baste it. <clears throat> it's going to probably be a lot harder to meander on the other one because, again, it's so thick. But we'll see how it goes. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Oops. Sorry, my screen is talking to me. <clears throat> All right, precision mode. Oops, basting mode. Okay, my machine was telling me I was in the wrong mode. up here to the top, leave my needle down, snip my extra thread away, and now I'm going to put it back in my precision mode at 10 stitches per inch. And if I was to do any smaller of a stitch, it would be just really, really tight. So 10 stitches of uh, per inch should be the um, smallest you would go on something like this because you won't be able to rip it out as well. So here we go. We're going to go again. Gonna go up and down.
my best to avoid joining the scene. See, so it pushed me around this. It's so wide that that foot pushed me around that scene. out of bobbin. Give me two seconds to swap that out. It's a good thing it wasn't on the polyester because I would have really had to make sure it lands exactly in the spot that it ended in. Oh, that was really good. It's going under this nicely. Yeah. Scott's out here, so. I'm sorry. I'll leave no, you don't have to leave me alone. I was just saying that you're out I'm here. Just curious. What I left it I don't know. I didn't see it. All right. So I'm going to come a couple stitches above where I ended. And then tack it down. And then I follow. As soon as it's tacked down, I tack all the way to where I ended. Move my needle down for a second. Pull my threads. And turn it on and continue.
two done. I'm going to pull this out. And we're going to advance the quilt. So you can see how fast something like this really wide, thick stitching actually goes super fast. I could probably have this whole entire quilt done in less than an hour. So, oh, actually, I want to, let's see. Um, I need to fill in some next to that 43. So I'm going to do a half of a row so that I can get up into that three area. I have to have some kind of stitching in there to hold it the rest of the way down due to the batting needing so to be stitched in around the number. Yeah, not sort of. I'm going to try to fill in around it neatly real quick. All right, let's add these on this side. I'm just putting my, oops, my um, side clamps on real quick. And then I'm going to baste just a little bit here on the side real quick. I'm not even gonna bother switching it to a baste stitch. I'm just going to baste this area right here. And then tie it off. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and baste it and we're gonna do half a row. So I'm gonna be filling in just this section so that I can get up in here. So I'll make my way up, come around, make a circle here, circle here, and then come out of it. That way I'm really close to everything, but not on the vinyl. As you've noticed that this does not cross the vinyl because I don't have that spoon foot. So I make do what I got. There's a special foot that goes over vinyl? There's a special foot that goes over um, big thick seams and thicky stuff. Oh. That's that spoon foot I keep telling you I want to get, the glide foot. Okay. Someday. No really big need for it because I don't quilt stuff like this on a daily basis, so. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just stitch right here real quick, basting it down. Right here to the top. Pop that down, snip these away. And now I'm going to fill this area in just a half word. I'm gonna do my same exact thing. About a half a row. right there.
so half a row is done. All right, so now I'm going to advance it the rest of the way now because I went around that four and the three to hold all that down. And I actually, real quickly, before I, oops, it doesn't wanna go on the vinyl, Tiffy. Before I do anything, I'm just gonna add a circle right here because I need a little bit of a stitch right here. Give me two seconds to add just a little circle right here. I know it's just out of the blue, but I have to add something in that to because of the stitch, um, the needing of stitching every so-and-so inches. So just put a little circle right there. Can't even pick the thread up around that vinyl. My goodness. That way it stays nice and secure. All right. Just let me put it all back in the later. It's okay. I'm not messing with it. All right. So now I'm advancing. I'm going to go about right here so that I can fill in those empty gaps. And look at the quilt is almost off the ground all the way already. You don't need this slide on? No. Okay. The, the camera sees the quilt better without it. Oh, what am I doing? I'm going to leave that right there for a second. What's everybody saying? I'm missing. Nothing. Oh, they're just said anything watching. They're not here. Yeah. All right. You go from 22 up to 28 and back down and back up and back oh, down. And... That's fine. All right. So All I'm right, just using right. my hands to start up here and then pull it down to straighten everything nice. Nicely straightened out. I'm going to go ahead and baste this with a regular basting stitch this time because it's not a half of a row, it's a full row. Well, I'm hoping people are learning because these t shirt quilts or any kind of shirt quilts, they are a hassle on the long arm. They're a hassle on a domestic machine because they're so thick. And I think that's why I struggled so much in the beginning when I first started quilting is because. I started quilting doing this stuff and I didn't have no clue when I first started that oh you're supposed to use what quilting cotton I didn't know you shouldn't always use clothing <laughs> you know but I had no choice in the beginning because this is how I started quilting so I didn't have a long arm obviously and now I do and I've learned my lesson with this whole quilting on random fabric thing but it works and comes out pretty nice either way. All right, come to where I need to start. And now I'm gonna start stitching again. So Hold on, before I stitch, I'm going to pull some stray threads so that way they're already completely cut and out of the way. Remember, if you're doing a quilt, find the source and snip it. Do not yank it out. That's what I'm doing real quick. I try to tend, I tend to try to get it while I'm on the long arm. That way, later, I don't have to go through and pick 5,000 threads that are coming out of seams because it happens. So I just find the source and snip them real quick so that I don't quilt over them and have to try to pick them out of the quilting, which happens quite often actually. All right, here we go. Oops, it would be nice if it was in a regular stitch. <laughs> Come on, switch. Oh, my machine's doing that thing again, hold on. Make sure it's on the back side, precision mode. It's so cold that my front screen is cold and it doesn't want to let me change anything. So there's another thing that you guys can learn. It doesn't like 90 degrees and it doesn't like 55 degrees. <laughs>
not gonna let me go. Come on, let me go. Oh, over it. You really have to manipulate that one. That was a really tough team. break. Sometimes that happens too. Oy, oy, oy. I'm going to leave the machine right where I ended because of the way the bobbin is sitting in there. All I have to do is pull it up and restart over again by tacking it down. I kind of figured this would happen more than it has already. That's good. That's only once so far. So I'm going to come back to where it ended because I've already stretched out the bobbin. So here's my bobbin thread. There's a loop on here. See that? I'm going to snip it at the loop. One of them will pull. One of them won't. So here's my puller. Here's my non-puller. I'm going to pull that away or snip it away. And I'm going to tack myself off right here. And... Up, snip that away, and then continue on. again so for some strange reason it's not happy today <laughs> we're gonna pull that through oh that's why I have a tingle up here at the top of my machine come on I completely broke that's crazy all right I gotta rethread the whole entire thing real quick takes a second because it completely broke away come on get in the hole oh. So that's two. Maybe I shouldn't have said it the first time when it happened. I figured it'd be a lot more than what it has. No, what happened? Oh, thread break. Oh. Complete thread break. Here, so that, sorry, I'm going to unblock it. I'm going to have Scotty hold on that side so that he can film. Oops, right here. Me threading the machine. Okay. Let me turn the big light on real quick. Just keep it right there. Okay, so for those that are new to this machine and you have, say, you just got it, I'm going to throw this in here. So we're going to take the thread. It comes up from the spool up here. I'm going to pop through this first little hook. 
Then I'm going to take my thread from this, slide it through the first hole. I'm going to grab it with my finger, around through the second hole. I'm going to let go of that top piece, grab this with my finger. So it looped around, and now I'm going to go through this third hole. All right, come on, get in the hole. Come through that third hole, grab it with my finger right here. Then I'm going to take the thread and pop it through this hook right here. You can hear it snap. Then I'm going to come in between these two discs right here, and you can hear that snap. I want it to snap. Come up. There's a hook right here. A hook. Come down underneath this bar, then come back up with the thread. Find your end again. It's glitching out. It missed a good chunk of that. It froze through part of it. Grab it through that hole right there. Then we'll come down and slide through this hole right here. It's like a guide, so it's kind of wide. I'm also it, going. It, it keeps freezing on. See, it's frozen. Then I'm going to slide through this right here, this little front hole, pull it back towards me, and then go into the needle hole, just like that. And now the machine is threaded. So let's come up over here again. But none of those comments are on the tab is tablet throws completely? Probably, because of where we are. Any Are you seriously? Maybe people have been commenting this whole time. The tablet's just frozen. All right. So it came through here, right here. And then it wrapped around these three holes right here. I went through all three. Went through all three of those holes. Loop, loop, loop. Then down to this right here, into that, through these two discs, around, up past, hooked into this hook right here, down from that, pulling it under this lever, up to here, right there, there is a hole, through that hole, down into this down here, then from that piece, let's see, right there, from there, it goes down into this front hole and then pull it back forward and then through the needle. So that's how that gets loaded. I, I stood next to the internet box and it's still not giving me any. Okay, I'll put you guys back on here. I guess we just don't get to read comments. Let's just do this. Back in a times. All right, now you can see everything they've been talking about. Woo wee! Yeah. So we didn't have any comments this whole time, guys, and didn't even know it. I'm way, way, way up there. I'm just a million of them. All right, so now I can find where I ended, and it turns out it's on this poly, which kind of sucks. And you can see right here, my thread started getting messed up. He popped in to give you props for getting it completed so fast. Oh yeah, I'm. These kind of things She's go so bed. quick. She just popped in and could say night. <laughs> All right. Due to the Maybe fact that up. I am going to attempt to get through every single one of these exact holes, I'm going to pluck this small <laughs> amount means, out. Thanks for selling me your mom's. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that ships out in the morning, Diane, by the way. Just letting you know. All right. So I found my bobbin thread. Now I just need to get rid of the thread right here. Diane wants to go to Okay. okay, I am going to pop my needle down about nice. right here. This is going to be hard because I'm going I'm going to go right over all these stitches because like I said, these stitches will never go away now. Oh, look, honey. It's permanently here. Gordy Q asked if you could show how you franken piece bedding. I said that the other day, didn't I? So you can see I'm one at a time stitching in each and every single one of these holes that were created thanks to the fact that this is a poly windbreaker. 
very hard, but I can do it just one stitch at a time. They also in the process of watching all your videos from the oldest to the newest. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. All right, so you can see I'm literally stitching in every single stitch. All right. Nice as I... All right, so I'm going to stop right there because that's all those stitches. So I went through exactly every single hole here. You know why? Because if I didn't, it would never go away. That's the sucky part about stitching into this stuff. Once that stitch is there, those holes, if they have to be removed, you literally have to stitch but into the, those same exact holes all over again. So, all right, let's start going. made me give up sewing oh my goodness the one who wants to see you do some frank and peace and batting sometimes see how you do it okay yeah i can do that i'm gonna fix this real quick there we go because i'm tired of the vibrating i want you guys to be a little bit more solid here there we go stay all right yes Walmart fabric. I like the Waverly brand. There is uh, me, uh, Mia, me, em, Emma and Mia, or Mia and Emma fabric also that Walmart sells. It's really good quality. Um, oh, yeah, that really sucks. So, are you going to um, replace the leg or not? Uh, can't you, if it's wooden, can't you make your own? Yeah. Well, it was on the leg of the machine. She has a wooden one. A wooden frame. She says it's solid wood. And this is where I'm ending. So now I'm going to advance to the next. If it wasn't for that thread problem, I probably would have been halfway through the next row. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna disconnect this on the sides and I'm going to advance and do the next row. And I'm hoping that I should be able to finish this tonight. I don't have a charger out here. So when my phone starts going almost dead, that's when I get off. How about that? This thing is still off. The phone has a bunch of comments here. I don't know how this thing. It could be like what was happening with the comments on other channels the other day too. Yeah. Because I didn't have comments on T's, remember? Yeah. It was the whole entire night. Well, it's not, for some odd reason, this is not picking up the internet. It's swirling the whole time too. That's because that sucks out here. Yes, I see. Why are you even stood next to the box in there? Okay. I'm, I'm just straightening it out with my hands real quick. Straightening it with my hands. Making sure everything is good. Alright, so now I'm just going to baste this side. We're going to put it back on baste. We're going to drop my thread. And you can tell that this border fabric is not quilt cotton. So there's a lot of shredding because it's for making shirts and pants and whatever else you make with this kind of stuff. Probably pajama pants would have been the thing someone would make with this. Mm, I can't get it to pick anything up, but I guess it's better than nothing. It's just frozen where it's at. All right, so I'm going to try to slide over nicely to the other side. I'm going to baste this side now. 
and then start quilting some more. The quilt is completely off the floor now, so it shouldn't be too much longer. Like I said, this is a very simple, easy stitch to do, and it goes real fast. Let me pluck some of these threads real quick while I'm right here, out of the seams. All right, let's adjust that, because it doesn't look like it's straight, but... So I'm going to stop it right here, put my needle down, change to precision, straighten it one more time with my hands. And we're going to do the next row. There we go. There. I'm going to stop this right here. It wanted to hit that seam right here and then it pushed me out of it so I have like a little bump but again I'm not really caring about that because as long as everything's quilted down and it's nice and fluffy which is what she wanted then all is good. I just have to watch oops and now I'm out of bobbin. <laughs> stop just in time to be out of bobbin. It's a good thing it didn't happen on the polyester because I don't want to have to deal with that one stitch at a time thing again. All right, let's throw, throw another bobbin in here. I literally have, I'm at the halfway point. This is the halfway point on the quilt, by the way, guys. So like I could literally have this done in no time at all. Mary used to use Waverly Drapery fab, uh, material. It's a very good quality material, she says. Oh yeah, the indoor outdoor fabric that Waverly yeah. has, yeah. Vicky says hello. Kim says hello. she likes a lot of uh, Walmart fabrics, but they they don't have very much. You know where else to get fabric, guys? Go buy shirts at the thrift store and sheets, cotton sheets. Do not buy. There's some kind of cottons like Pima cotton. No, not Pima cotton. What was it? It something. No, it was a Pima cotton. It felt really weird. And do not use microfiber. It may say cotton, but it's microfiber. It's too tight of a weave. It makes it really, really hard to quilt. Almost like polyester. Hello. Hold 
than what I'm doing. I'm leaving an almost five inch square down at the bottom when I get to it. I'm not there yet, so you'll see when I get there. If my battery stays on, you'll see the whole quilt quilted in one video. just perfect. You should have seen what I just did. There was a little stain on this shirt right here, and I quilted right over it, and now you don't even see the stain. That's awesome. The two Good little job. dots. Good it landed job. right on it. quilts or stuff like that but even with the interfacing in it because it can be done you just got to watch around the seams and it would be best if you had a spoon foot i don't have one but if you do use that oh thank you i can get these i know what you're doing all right so i'm going to advance now right there. all right so i'm advanced i'm going to put my clips back on and then, yeah, I have to put them. it at the. I'll let you clip them because right I'm not sure if there's up. a certain spot. I'll let you do that. Mm -hmm. It's not really a certain spot, but. What you were doing, that was good, my brother. All right, we're almost done. We have a quarter, uh, a little bit more than a quarter of the quilt left. All right, so I'm going to baste down this real quick. I'm going to put my machine on baste. I'm just basting half inch stitches, it helps. Hold the sides nice and taut so that the quilt stays really good. And I know my robe that's on is kind of thick for you guys to see when it gets in the way. But... And I always double stitch on that too. I don't know why I do that, but I just do. I find it tacks it down a lot better than a single stitch all the way down. All right, so I'm gonna carefully cross over to the other side. I'm also gonna be using my hands to flatten this whole thing down. Everything's nice and flat. My seams are landing on the pole perfectly. If you guys saw this, you'd see my seams are going across. So the quilt hasn't shifted or moved at all. It's staying pretty darn good. The border kind of looks a little funky, but that's just because it wasn't pieced perfectly and the lines never really lined up. But it's on there. It's getting tacked down. It looks good. It looks very good. It matches the whole theme, and so far, like, five people have told me their husbands absolutely think this is the perfect memory quilt, and when they die, they want their wives to make something like this. <laughs> Those are the messages I've been getting, that saying that cool. this is the perfect man's 
memory quote right here. If their family member is deceased, this is what they would want because they're a man and this is the kind of quote quotes that men like. I knew I saw another stitch right here. Jill, we were just talking about Frank and Peace, and Jill says she has a bunch of scrap batting that I should probably sew together to make a nice size that can probably be used for a quilt. Yep. Yep. Well, we were I were just will, talking about that. Frank I and Peace and Batten. <laughs> if you guys saw the stack in front of the window in here, you'd be like, oh my goodness. I have a big, huge stack of batting and cotton or poly or cotton poly blends, 80 20s. I try to separate them into piles of certain brands that I've been using of batting so that those, they stay together. Cause you don't want to put a eight ounce loft polyester next to a cotton and Frank and piece it together. Cause that's just kind of dumb actually. But I keep the similar brands together and then I just Frank and piece them together. So when I get to that little quilt, I'll show you guys doing that. Sharon, it's... Sharon says I'm watching you do this and getting the willies every time you get close to your fingers. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you see that boo-boo? That's what happens when the needle gets close to my finger. It didn't break the needle this time, but it did yes. It did go through my skin she, and yanked it off. She does that a lot. It, it happens because like when I go to like hold something right here, um, I get too close and I end up touching, my finger will move, it'll just, the, the shakes that I have, it, it ends up in front of it and I end up getting stabbed. I don't, I don't sew through my fingers though very often. It's only happened twice on this machine now. <laughs> Ellen wants you to message her and let her know what you charge just to baste or quilt on your long arm. Um, from another state, that would be quite expensive, Ellen. Um, if you wanted me to baste something for you, sending everything to me and me just going across with inch, you know, like one inch basting stitches, back and forth, back and forth, it's still going to, it's going to be, I don't know, probably around $45 because mm -hmm. I have to load it and, and use she thread. Says so you can well, message I'm just, her later. Yeah, I can message so you later, you. but I mean, plus you got to pay for your shipping. I mean, that's going to get pricey to come here to Arizona. That's not the guy that did our house, Kenny Thompson. No. No. Oh, okay. mm -mm. Gonna All right. There we go. Office, suburban son passed his bar exam today. Ooh, wow, that's awesome. So he's a lawyer, huh? What kind of law is he going to study? I guess he's going to be a lawyer. What kind of know. law? Actually, well, yes, he just passed it today, but I think he's going to be one. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't think I have the, the will to be a lawyer. I wouldn't want to be one. I watch CSIs and lawyer shows, but... I watch, a, how, I watch the whole entire show, How to Get Away with Murder, and they're lawyers. And you know, that's just the job. Certain things involved in the job. I don't know if I could defend somebody like that. And, and knowingly, oh, they did it, but do everything to get them out of it. You know, I, I don't think I can do something like that. I'll stick to being a quilter. <laughs> you could be a prosecutor. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Because what if I know that they're innocent, but the government wants me to find them guilty? You know, it would be it would be so hard. I don't think I can do it. Oh wow! Right there! Right there! For those that are just joining, if you see on some of these fabrics that line that's being created, let me see if it shows real quick. On this one, okay. So see this? Stop right here. Right there. Can you see this echo line that's happening around the fabric? Yeah, you so can I see that, that lightning. I wanted to ask that you. That is because this foot is the wrong foot. This is a sure foot for ruler quilting and or everything. And an open toe foot is going to do the same exact thing. When you're quilting stuff like this, I don't have the right tools, okay? I just do with what I got. But there is a foot that is a spoon that goes on here. This just wipes away, okay? It's just going to wipe right away. See, it's gone. But it, what it does is it's just too much pressure against all this thickness because, again, this is backing fabric, really thick batting, and 
two layers. There's a woven interfacing and then the thick cottons. And I'm going between all these weird layers. So we got thermal here. We got t-shirt cotton here, t-shirt cotton. This is a little bit of a mixture cotton right here with stretch, you know. So you definitely have to make sure you have the correct foot. And there is, there's like three different kinds of spoon feet for them. But it's it definitely goes over thick seams better and all that stuff. And that is the kind of foot I should be using, but I don't have one. So that's why it's leaving those marks if you've noticed this whole time. But they wipe away. It's just it's just what it's doing. So don't freak out when you see it happening for those that are new and think that once you get a long long arm that that's going to happen all the time because it's not. It's just the way the foot is going around the fabric. It's only the really super thick one. Yep, it's so only. It's only on the super thick stuff. Yeah, I'll be frank and piecing on the match to this, not yeah, the other one, one, but the little tiny okay. one that I made. That'd be cool. They can see how I do it to polyester batting because yeah. that's all I have a lot of scraps for. Suburban City's going to do international urban races as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Very awesome. Bart says we need, we need to invent this metal glove. Super lightweight but strong so that even if it hits your finger, it won't cut you and won't hurt you. Oh, like there. the metal gloves that they use in uh, fast food restaurants Something or like um, taking food out of the deep fryer. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. I just have to, like, when I'm really, really tired, I tend to get super close. But when I'm wide awake, I don't let my hand get that close, but I really have to pay attention here because of the differences in fabric here I definitely have to stay as close as I can to pull fabric for grafting and move it if needed. Yeah some of your guys' quality of camera is gonna be different. It's just a real light indent in the fabric. It's not really a mark. It's nothing bad. It's not like a stain. It's just, it's just making an indent when the foot's going around on the really thick fabric. So as you're saying, it just wipes away. You just move the fabric and the mark goes away. Okay, let's see if it's showing. You can see. I can see it from my camera. So if you guys have your camera, your whatever device you're watching from, those little three dots where you can change it to 720p or 1080p, you should be able to see it because that's what I'm recording in. But there's this like light faint line and you can see it around any color that's dark you know but it wipes away if you just wipe over it the whole line goes away it's i don't know if it's like a dust creation from underneath the foot going over the fabric or if it's just the foot pushing into the fabric a certain way on its own Bourbon said he's still young and he wants to save the world Aw, that's so sweet. That's a good goal. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, I wanted to be a doctor. Never happened, but I wanted to be. And now I'm the family's, uh, everybody calls me mom or Tiffany. I have this, 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 and this. Have you heard of it, seen it, know about it? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I probably read about it a year ago. Let's see what you got going on. <laughs> yeah. I'm my own little family doctor. <laughs> I tell them whether they should or shouldn't go to the hospital. <laughs> kind of funny, actually.
probably two and a half more times to do this. And this row, it seems I kind of went a little crooked on. So technically, I might be able to get. Um, I'll get this unhooked. side. I'll get this side. I know what you're doing to a degree. I'll get this side. I kind of went a little right there because I got to fill in some spots. That's okay, though. It makes it look really cool when I do that. All right. Oops, come on, get it on there. I'm gonna check my. Jim's telling them how to change it. Thank right. you, Jim. Shannon says you could get the gloves we used to clean the slicer when I worked in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that metal thing that I'm thinking of yeah, that's from working like... in fast food. Because yeah. when I worked at Arby's, we had this special glove that we put on to do. Um, the curly fries in the fryer. It was different than the regular fries. I don't know why, but curly fries were worse to take out of the fryer. They taste so darn good though. Oh yes, Arby's curly fries are probably the best ones. <gasps> They're better than Jack in the Box's mm -hmm. curly fries. Yeah, I wanna see you go around this one here. I wanna see that. I've been waiting on it. Yeah, this will be done in one video. So this will be the second time you guys have fully watched me quilt a whole quilt in one live stream. And it's a twin size. So that's actually a little bit bigger than a normal twin size. Yeah, it's a little bit. You gonna bind it tonight or are you gonna wait Oh no, tomorrow? this is gonna be a tomorrow. Once I'm done quilting tonight, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. We'll be out here in the cold, it makes my knees hurt. So I'm in. Oh yeah, I'm dying Standing. here. All right. We're getting old. I know this scares you guys with this whole, I come up to my fingers. I know when to stop though. Like I'm using my other hand to be the pulley. She knows what she's doing. She's done Oops. many, 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 many. Yeah, I do this so often. I, I run over to myself every once in a while, but I do this quite often. So, oh man, come on screen. Ah, I did it again. Hold yeah. on, I gotta go to the back of the screen real quick and what did it do? Change the setting. What did it do? Oh, it just, it got stuck again. Come on. And Jill says 720 is the best she can get on her iPad. It is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're, Scott's watching from the iPad. That's why yeah. he knows the same, same thing we're going with right now. Yeah. All right, All right here that we go. Has, has been And look, I ran out of bobbin on a non piece that does not have polyester, so that's another good thing again. And now the quilt has is not hanging on the floor, so I can just grab from where I end and put another bobbin in. So that is five, six bobbins already. My goodness, really? No, five bobbins, five bobbins. 
Jim says, I'm more onion rings, but not the fake Burger King ones. Oh, oh yeah, gross. <laughs> no, I, I like, like onion rings. I used I don't to love know. them. I haven't had Burger King's onion rings in ages. But I, I used do to like love onion rings. <laughs> onion rings, but my it's, belly it's, does not like onion rings because I have severe, severe GERD, so I can't have that kind of stuff anymore. <laughs> Mary says, I love onion rings, too. Yeah, but everybody's jumping on the onion rings. California to Michigan and ate so much Arby's she thinks she can go without for a few years. <laughs> that's okay. You guys are making now that we've m mentioned Arby's, that's going to be my goal for the week or so. <laughs> I'm going to ask Scott to I go get care. us Arby's. We can go tomorrow. We get coupons. We can't do it well, we don't have any coupons. We threw those ads pays yeah, away. We have to wait till the next ads pay comes Mom in. And John, <laughs> so does Leroy. <laughs> How fast the bobbin chain goes. This goes pretty quick because I'm seriously quilting every, I don't know. There's, it, yeah, there's at least an inch to inch and a half of space. Yeah, I'm watching. It looks really awesome. And for those just joining, the color thread I'm using is um, Glide thread, and it's the color cool. Is the color cool gray? It's a really pretty color. Oops, I hit that corner of that. It's so thick, and I just realized that these two are the same fabric next to each other. Oh well. Oh, well, that happens. Still talking about Arby's. Sharon says my favorite is the giant roast beef sandwich. They used to put just a touch of cheddar on it. Oi! Hi, Regine. Regine Stephen is here. Hello. Did she get something sent off today? No. Yeah, I think so. Your package is sent off. Okay, so I'm gonna get really close right here, or not. Let's see if I can fix that. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Right there. I'm not quilting in that 43. And I really don't like what just happened there, but uh, unfortunately I can't change anything about it. It's way too thick and I got bumped out of the seam. Okay, so I have a big boo-boo right here that I don't really like, and I went into my throat space there, but oh well. I'll just come up close to it when I go to that side. Okay, so I'm done with another row. I'm going to advance the quilt. Okay, okay. I'll do my side. And now I just have two more passes, pretty much, to do. I'll do my side. Right there. So I'm going to do a pass and a half pretty much now. Yeah, you're right at the end. I'm here. at the end, but I have to hold it as I go so it's a little bit harder because I can't baste this whole bottom yet because I'm floating my top. So I just pull it nice and tight. No big deal. Yep, floating it. That's what it's called. Uh -huh. When I put this on, I just pull it as far as I can to where it's right about the distance of the stitching. Okay. That way it pulls the stitching area. If I pulled it separate, then I wouldn't get a straight stitch all the way down. All right, so let's go back to basting right here. Actually, I'm not even gonna bother because the screen probably won't shift me. I'm just gonna, oh no, the screen decides to shift. Do you see that? It, it decided to go off of the basting. <laughs> so dumb. Cold and heat. So the machine does not like cold and heat. Gord Tiffany has GERD too, so I'm sure yeah. she understands her Yes, I issues. have GERD. 
pretty bad. We're talking about because the onion rings and uh, stuff. Yeah, I don't eat onion rings. I don't eat um, regular garlic by itself anymore. I don't eat tomatoes. I eat tomato sauce, like tomato ketchup, you know. But I don't have tomato sauces. I don't eat um, spaghettis. I don't eat anything like that anymore. Because, I mean, I used to, but it still bothered me then. And now it's just, I ignore it all completely. So. And poor Nita is having an allergic reaction to some cookies. Oh, that sucks. She's itching. She took some Benadryl. Oh, well, hopefully it eases pretty quick. Because cookies are, it's the time of the year for the cookies. Yes, it is. I even eat cookies this time of the year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we forgot to eat brownies. Remember I wanted... Okay, we can do it tomorrow. I bought cookies today, though. First of all. <laughs> I know Maxine brought me some I know, she red, brought velvet you red velvet cake, cake which is in too. there. Yes. I have to watch all that kind of stuff. Donuts are like death for me, and milk products are like death for me, and brownies and cookies and pastries, but I eat it anyway. I just eat it in very small, minute amounts. Okay, now I'm going to be pulling at the bottom of the quilt as I quilt because I can't baste just yet because of the way this quilt is laying. So I'm going to be quilting right now a half of a row. Okay, so I'm going to tie this off and then we're going to tack the quilt down and you're going to see how I really ruined my finger. This is how I get the most boo-boos is what I'm about to oh, do right now. this too? Yep. Okay, well then, it's right there, you can't do that? No, they're going to see what happens to my, how I end up, this is the, where I mostly hurt my fingers is what I'm about to do right now. Okay, well, I have no idea what you're doing. Only because I float my quilt tops, so. 
All right, so let's hook this back up. All right, to the end right there. Oops, come on, come on. All right. And you're gonna notice it's a little on the crooked side, but in the end, it'll straighten out. It's not really crooked crooked, it's straight. I should be able to show you guys, but I don't wanna take the camera out. So we're gonna come along here so that you can see. This whole end right here, it looks crooked because I've been floating the top this whole time. But when I start stretching it, you'll see that it will land nice and straight. So, oops, let's go back to this side real quick. Hey, Nita used to take her antinidine for food allergies. Really? She can't take that anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't sucks. know it did anything for food allergies. So I'm going to start tacking this down real quick right here. And I'm going to stop it. Only this side only, just like that for now. And then I'm going to go over to the other side and baste all the way the rest of the way across. And then I'm going to get rid of all the excess batting real quick because it'll help, it'll bunch up. We're going to switch to baste stitch. I'm going to put that right here. There we go. That's where I want it. So it looks like it's stretching it all out, but in the end, it'll be really nice. Coming down to the end, this is how I hurt my fingers. Okay. What I do, and you guys are gonna think I'm really weird for this, but I take one hand and I push it down right here, pulling everything nice and tight, and I run the machine like this across my fingers. I did it for a long time with a ruler, but um, turns out the ruler ends up getting messed up. So I just run my fingers along it and take a couple stitches to tighten everything down. So every once in a while, this is how I end up stabbing myself. Oops, stay exactly like just what happened almost right now. <laughs> so this is just because I floated the top, which means I did not tack this or hold this on any bar or rail. I just let it hang and at the end I have to do this. You're hooting and hollering, honey. Yeah. It doesn't look bad at all, it's great. And I just hold it and oops, try not to run my fingers over. There's probably easier ways to do this, but I just do what I do. <laughs> and since the batting I use is really thick for this, it definitely needs to be held down really good and this whole pulling tight and thing needs to happen. So this is probably the longest part of this whole entire quilt is doing this right here. Just the last you don't need to pull from that stitch. I can pull as you go. Pull harder. There we go. No. Okay, don't hit my fingers. Remember, I have to move here, woman. Okay, let go. You can let go. I gotta keep this a little bit. Ramming it right toward me there. Straighter so right here. Sew, sew a finger into it. Yep. What's the best way to do a quilt? Let's put some finger juice in it. Yeah. <laughs> Mary asks, why did you float the top? I always float my tops because if I have to hook it to another rail, that means more pinning and more making sure everything lines up straight and more straightening things out and more. It's more work. I just let it hang. I just let it hang. The only time I actually don't let it hang is every once in a while. I uh, get a quilt that lines up with the back fabric, so I have to tack it down. Right now I'm just going across and cutting the excess batting out of the way real quick. I do that while it's on the frame. It's like the last and final step for me, and then I just throw it back here in my wonderful big huge pile next to the window. Teresa Luis says I use to take the I use pins to take the quilt down. Hi Donnie. Donnie says hi, honey. Going across real quick and checking this seam right here for threads because Donna, when I sorry. Sorry, when Donna. I added this border, um, <laughs> there was a little bit more shredding because you, as you can see. 
some of these pull right out. I just pull on them very carefully. Some of them are sewn in. All right, okay. Here we go. Let's finish this up. Oh, there was another one. I missed it because it was the same color. All right. Let's snip all this excess stuff away. So let me grab them. Now, here's my last half a row. And I'm still on baste. Somehow it... All right, there we go. All right. Penny, yeah. You know what? I looked it up just to be curious about mailing a, a small package to South Africa. And it was 46, what was it? 46 something. And then the next price up for a, even, because it was, I put it for 0.4. 0.4 um, ounces. 0.4 ounces. And yeah, it was 46 something. And then the next one was 97 something. If it would have been a little bit yes. more, I was like, are you kidding? Me? I even <laughs> asked him at the post office today, not just for you, Penny, but for all of our subscribers that are out of the country, you have to fill out paperwork to send a package internationally, which I did not know that the lady said it's a lot of paperwork just to send a package. Yeah. So I letters, you know, send you a letter or card or stuff like that out of the country, but uh, packages is a whole nother story. This is why we don't ship out of the country. Yes. So for all of our subscribers that are not in the U.S., I'm yeah. sorry, but it makes we, it so hard. We have some mailing issues. Yeah. All right. I'm going to continue. But if you have family that visits you in your country that you're at from the America area, then you definitely can have a visit to them and then take it to you in person. <laughs> Telling me it's six degrees there right now. Oh, yeah. And I thought being uh, 55 here in the garage was cold. Woo. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do this if it was six there. Uh, no way. No way, no how. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm coming to the end. Bobbin, no joke, keep going. My machine starts sounding weird when the bobbin mode is low. I really don't want it to run out. Especially at the end. I don't really end. understand what, what that is, but it sounds like a lot of money. He said, yeah, it's crazy. He paid whatever R4000 is. Yeah. To send Phil's their son in North Carolina. Oh my goodness. It sounds like a lot.
That is it. Mary I says she used to mail to Canada a lot. She I don't think it is as ex expensive to Canada as it is to like um, European countries and um, overseas. Uh, Canada is connected to us. That's probably why it's not as expensive. Nita says it's uh, the customs form isn't that bad. There's a lot of things you can't ship to certain countries. I don't know. The lady just made it sound like it was a lot of stuff. She didn't say how much paperwork or anything. So I did use six bobbins. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm going to have Scott hold the camera to film the last of this experience because this is my favorite part right here. And then I'll be done because my camera is at 50%. So let's see if I can get this done. And Okay, you want me to hold that? Yep. So you're going to take over this and I'm going to just put this over here. Okay, let's go slow. I don't want them to get dizzy. Okay. Take that. What, what am I actually filming here? You are going to film me. My oh, of course part. I'm going to film you. All right, so here's my favorite part. I loosen these right here. And I lean this up right here so that I can get to these pins. And I just go ahead and I do this. I just run across this whole entire thing. Okay, honey, I don't want to make anyone dizzy. We're not making anyone dizzy. You can stay where you are. They can just... Watch me cross in front of the camera, taking pins out. Okay. You'll know why this is my favorite part in a second. Because Cause you're done? <laughs> I, I'm done. Because you're done? <laughs> All right, so it's going to fall. Watch that. But I'm going to come over here, and Scott's going to stand right here where I am, just like this. Come, come down on. at an angle and watch. Watch what it looks like. Wait, 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 wait. Come down I at an angle. grab okay. this, and you can see all the quilting as I slowly go. Oh, look at how awesome. Look at that. It is so cool. Do you want me to? Nope, nope, cool? nope. I'm okay. almost to the end. Almost to the end. So you're having a hard time there. I know. I have to re-grab. Re-grab. What are you breaking? And there we go. You're breaking over there. The boxes? Oh, my. Then I just lay it up here. Mm -hmm. oh. She's stepping on boxes that we have out in the garage. It's looser, and then I go ahead and pop all these out. So it's just pinned on. Ow! There went. And you got stabbed by one of those. Another bleeder. I try to do this without stabbing myself. All Tiffany's quilts are made with blood, <laughs> sweat, and tears. Yes, the blood part is for sure. <laughs> Everybody gets a piece of my DNA. And before I lost all my hair, you got tons of DNA. That was yeah. because my hair was falling out into everything I did. All right. So let me lay it over the over the frame real quick so that you guys can see. Because it's kind of big. We'll just lay it over the frame, sort of, and take a picture. I mean, not a picture, but Scott can stand where you guys can see. Well, you can take pictures if you want for the well, lady when it's all done, well, when the when camera's it's done, when yeah. phone's off, yes. All right, so here it is. Just like that. Come over here. Ellen says your quilt is so beautiful, Tiffany. So there is down here at this 43. It's really puffy because I didn't quilt in there. But I'm on the back side of this quilt, I'm going to be putting a square right here. That's a tag that I made. And from the back side, I'll be stitching it. So the stitching will be on the front and it'll tack this down more flatter because that's where the tag is gonna go is right here, perfectly around that. So that's why that's kind of puffy looking because I left it open. Jim says awesome. So you can come up now. Okay. So there's the whole entire thing. For those that missed in the beginning, let's pull it just a little bit this way so you can see. This is what I added, the In Loving Memory. Just, I did it on one block. It's really small, it's monogrammed. You know, if I had an embroidery machine in the future, I would do something more better than that. But, you know, it still looks good. And the other quilt has it in the opposite corner, you know. And Joyce says that's awesome. So there it is, a quilt done and one. And he says, looks great, Tiff, it's pretty big. You can just film me from back there, I guess. In my beautiful pink robe, so. And your minions entire... and your minions pajama bottoms. Don't yes. forget those. Yes. My minions. Gotta have my you gotta minions. have the minions. I'm freezing out here though. Um, so that's it. I quilted this whole entire I'm thing. I'm in shorts. It's not very thick. It, it's not dense at all. This is the loosest kind of quilting to possibly ever do. But 
this was chose because of all those seams. So just remember, if you're making a t-shirt quilt, a quilt that has lots of different clothing, mixed blends of everything, and you have to use interfacing and all those seams coming together, just remember, the looser the quilting you do, the better. Even if you're just stitching in a ditch, which is kind of hard because of the seams, but if you're just stitching uh, away from the ditch, you know, to echo inside blocks, it makes it, it makes a difference. So you can still quilt on a long arm or anything with all these layers. It make it goes quick, as you just saw, all in one video, and don't be afraid to do it. So. Next thing I'll be doing is binding this, and this one will get bound in the excess fabric from the back of this one, which is this color, and then quilt number two will have the matching backing for that, and I'm just going to bind it like that. So it'll look just fine coming up on the front. And tomorrow we'll probably load the other so, one on. Yeah, tomorrow I'll load the other one. If it not tomorrow, we'll see, because I am tired. I'm exhausted. But I know. All right, well, so you this did this done. so quick and easy. And that's it, guys. Uh, so Ellen I, was asking how big it is. There's some is other people commenting, but the comments don't stay on the phone. 72 by 92. I think, I think Mary yeah, said to take 77 a... 77 by 92. I'll okay. tell you right now, exactly. I think Mary said to take a picture of you, because you're... Oh, he can't do it while it's minions. on the stream. It is 74 by... Let's see. Hold on. We're going to move this with the quilt. Don't break my tape measure. 92. It's, it's 74.92. I thought it was 77.92. It's 74.92. So yeah, that's, it's a twin size. You could put it on a full size bed and it would fit just fine too, as well. I'm thanking you, all of you for joining me. Such a late night, um, but it had to get done. This video is created. I will do number two, quilt number two, and it'll be the last besides binding them. And that'll be it for the making a t-shirt quilt out of anything. So or clothing quilt, random clothing quilt. So thank you guys for hanging out and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Good night.